video. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you the world's first 2x13 electronic group set. And here it is. This is a rotor 13 speed 1036 cassette paired with the wheel top EDS TX road system. On the front on the crank side I have a Rero carbon crank and a 4630 uh, front chain ring. <coughs> The bike itself is just a Linsky gravel bike, a GR300. Um, I've got a titanium fork on it, some nice elite wheels, 32C uh, tires, and rides pretty nice. Um, I contacted Wheeltop right after I put this together and saw that it worked to see if this was something they were planning to offer because they didn't have a full group set. And I had never seen anything. I couldn't find anything on anybody doing this. And it's kind of interesting. I sent them that email in August and they just bought the company, Rotor, <laughs> or bought a majority sh uh, stake in their shares. And have now been, uh, they've said they're going to be the distributor in Asia for Rotor. So who knows? You might see a new Rotor electronic group set on the market or a new wheel top group set on the market here pretty soon. I think this is going to shake up the industry because Shimano and SRAM don't have anything competitive at all. Um, they don't have a 13-speed uh, road system, and the only 13-speed electronic system from SRAM is more expensive than the bike I just built. So also, it's, it's much heavier. This system's almost 500 grams lighter than a 105 Di2, and it's significantly lighter than Dura-Ace. I will be honest, if I was to add up the entire group set, you're looking at about 11 to 1200 bucks on this. Why is it more expensive than you'd think? Because getting it to the United States costs hundred dollars more than getting it in Europe because it's not directly sold to the United States. I did get this on Amazon. The cassette I got on uh, bike in or trade in, or there's a lot of different something in sites that sell these, these cassettes. Um, took me about a month to get it, uh, cause it came from Norway. But uh, my brother, uh, Pookie Butt, you guys may know who he is, uh, an avid cyclist, got tens of thousands, way more than that, of miles on the road. He's going to take this thing out right now and give it a work, give it a workout, see how it works. Um, let's see, how low can it go, though? Um, okay. So, I am like... I mean, this is like an eight plus percent grade at the steep points right here, this little climb. And I'm still holding a pretty high cadence and only doing 130 watts. This is insanely low. I'm kicking up, I have to kick up to like 200 here, but like not really that hard. All right. You really have to press on the downshifter button. That trim. There's an auto trim feature for the front derailleur. And it's it's so the front derailleur is super loud. But it's just kind of fun to hear when you're shifting the back and then you hear the front trim. I mean, it's not my SRAM system or, I mean, that's the only uh, electronic system I have other than this, so. It's my only comparison, but that thing just, just snap, snap, snap. So this is this bike's maiden voyage. It has yet to be out yet. We just finished it. Oh yeah, my heart rate's super high. I'm just so excited and I've had so much coffee, which, no, it's the excitement. 
This bike is very satisfying. Also, this is the cheap, like $13 saddle off of Amazon. Oh, oh my God, dude, the rear hub, dude, the rear hub. <laughs> dude, the downshift button is literally the guy, the meme. Are you sure about that? You sure about that? If you aren't completely sure you want to shift and shift with much purpose, AKA pressure, it will not do anything. Yay, the first little bit of downhill, this whole ride. I've done this route before on video, but not with the 360 cam. So you might be familiar, but it's all uphill basically out. All right, let's try a drop in the front. Oh my God, that is such a dramatic difference. That uh, spacing on the front ring is nuts. It's a 30-46, and that jump is very big. I'm also probably, I, you know, I actually forgot. The real reason I'm going so fast, my Silka socks. I'm extremely aero today. Dude, that front derailleur just yells at you. So, but also disclaimer, I have no experience with any other company's front uh, electronically shifting derailleurs. My one other system is a one by. Gravel. Lovely. We'll take a second of shade, get a little water. That's 10.6.06 miles, like 10 miles. Oh my God, I'm ready for the way back. Everything's still recording. I don't know if the GoPro has been bouncing down. I'm gonna adjust it up. Here we go, resting heart rate-ish. Still a little high. Dude, I'm so excited and this is so warm. The way back will be more on the level of airflow that I'm used to inside. Here we go. Let's see if we can catch that guy. You wanna see if we can catch that guy? I do. I mean, it isn't fair really, cause I do have aero socks. So does he really have a chance? No, not really, but whatever. Life ain't fair. Oh yeah, now for the fun bit. This bike is very comfy. It really does eat up a lot of general road vibration. Every bike will feel a pothole. It's kind of just how you feel on the just less than glass feeling road, you know? On when you add just a bit of rolling resistance onto a surface with a bit of texture, I don't know, that's when you really feel it. I think overall, my favorite thing about this bike is it feels indestructible. Whoa. Like for how light it is, it feels so strong. And that can purely be just placebo, but when it hits bumps, oh, big old wasp hit my arm. Feels a very, very responsive when you stand up.
So I haven't needed my fastest gears yet. Cyclist! And some free speed. I don't know. It's uh, definitely hitting the fun button. We are fizzing. We are fizzing. But overall, such a comfortable ride. Probably tell why I like this part. Gearing's pretty good. I mean, it's not Shimano or SRAM good, but it's pretty good. I think a lot of it also is the rotor cassette. You put a rotor cassette next to a Shimano cassette, that's when you really like notice that like hyper glide. And for another example on why it's just better, we had it tuned very poorly when we had the Shimano on it and it shifted, even with a poor tune. This, my brother's having a heck of a time getting the tune. All right, so first ride out on this two by thirteen system. So, what are you? What are your thoughts on this? What do you think? For the shifting, I mean, ninety times out, ninety-five times out of hundred, it shifts just fine, and you don't really even think about it. Um, there's just a couple times that it just like will hang up, but I feel like if you expect it, like, you can kind of pedal like in a way that it'll just shift through it. Like you can kind of almost just do this like like almost like stutter in it and it'll like drop the gear like if it's like not dropping uh, I only really had like one problem like going from five to six but then other than that most of my issues were like being down in like two to three uh, and maybe yeah two to three I would say is the one that was or three to two actually it was more worse than two to three so just some fine tuning on the, those lower cogs yeah maybe but again like so there was this one time it did it and then i'd like kind of almost like back pedal like maybe like three degrees like i'm talking barely like almost just a click just a stutter and it snapped it like one time and i, I have to do it more I, th that worked twice but i don't know if that's like actually how it if that's just how it works um but i mean i I think it's set up with the big paddle uh, for uh, downshifting or no upshifting and then the small little paddle for downshifting. And so I had some problems. Maybe it's just, I probably just me being a dumbass, but um, there was a lot of times I would hit the big paddle wanting it to make it down or make it, yeah, downshift, but it would uh, upshift. That's that's changeable in the app, yeah, I believe. So, but I think that set up how like Shimano is set up normally, and I think that's just me not used to it. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing is that the little button uh, for going down into the smaller cogs in the back, there's like two stages to it, and there are so many times that I'd hit it, and it hit only the first stage, and then it just didn't shift, and I'm just ah, so I'd have to hit it again to shift it. Right, it's a two, it's it a two-way button. I, 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 in the video I described it, I was like, it's like that got that that meme of that guy who's like, are you sure about that? Are you sure about that? Like, yeah. it's like, are you sure you want to shift? Because you really have to be committed to pushing that button for it to shift. Otherwise, it's just like... Well, I didn't realize this until I looked at the light on the hood. That's a two-stage button. A half a press actually is supposed to have some kind of a command because the light lights up. That's so the thing is there's a two stages, but like the difference between the two stages, like you like have to be right. very committed to the shift. It's not just like a soft... Like what you're used to more with like other electronic systems where it's just right. like, like the tap is very... And I can't find anywhere in the app where there's a way to assign that second state, that, that first so, half click. Like, so there were many a times where I, where I pushed the button thinking I was going to shift and it didn't shift. I see. There was like, that was probably the most common mistake that I ran into with the drivetrain. Um... But again, I'm an indoor rider, and I do not shift nearly as much as most people do. I'm, I'll grind it out more so than I probably should, like when I 
change the terrain. How was the low range with the 3036 compared to like your, what I think your Lauf is a 4052? A 4052, yeah, very, uh, very similar. Um, I definitely have gotten spoiled with the uh, one by system because like yeah. I don't think about it as much, but like, I, oh, and I had enough, literally when I first started up the road, I was going up the first like kicker heading off the block and I dropped to the small chain ring and it just was gone. It just fully derailed just, and I had to, I had to unclip and mm. reset it with my hand. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about these cheap, this cheap chain ring up front yet. Yeah, I just, I, I was very ginger with it whenever I'd shift the front. Yeah, I had a derail on the top one too, but it's not rubbing and I don't think it's out of adjustment. I just think it might be the chain rings. I've got a, I'll put a different one on there and see if it's, yeah. you know, but that's the lightest one I had. So of course that's the one I used, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean... It works. Yeah. Uh, what did you think about that carbon crank set? Was it soft or did it? Did you not even think about it? I didn't think about it. That's good. That, that's, <laughs> that's, that's perfect. Awesome. Well, I guess the first ride was a success. We've got some tuning to do. If, yeah, if you can tune it, that would be really cool. Like, there's just a couple times where it's just like, ah. This didn't want to go into second like, gear, there so. There were a couple, like, blaring moments where you're like, this is definitely not a Shram or Shimano. Yeah. Like, this is definitely not. And I will be honest, from the way it shifted on the Shimano cassette versus this rotor was night and day. And I didn't even have, like, the B-screw adjustment adjusted at all for the Shimano cassette correctly. And it still shifted perfectly. Yeah. And snappy. So it was like... Yeah, I can say I'm. But, yeah. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna pull up the videos now and see how it looks and everything. So. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, awesome so test ride. It's a, it's a fun it's a fun bike that's for sure. Hopefully, uh, you enjoy riding it a little bit. Yep. Awesome. It's really fun.